A sure test of the class character of any political party or tendency is the attitude it takes to military activities by its own government, especially when such activities are organised on a so-called humanitarian basis. The Socialist Equality Party is the only party which has consistently opposed the actions of the Australian military and police in East Timor and the small nations of the South Pacific. We have explained that these interventions are not being carried out to benefit the people of these countries. They are aimed at securing the immediate interests of Australian imperialism, as well as broader strategic goals in collaboration with its chief ally, the United States. Australian military and or police forces now operate in East Timor, Papua New Guinea, the Solomons and Fiji, largely without opposition being voiced at home. How has this come about? The press and mass media have played their part in promoting the humanitarianism of the Australian armed forces. But they have not acted alone. Various radical tendencies, particularly the Socialist Alliance, have given crucial support. Humanitarianism as the new guise for Australian militarism was first deployed in East Timor in 1999. Then, radical protest groups, with the Democratic Socialist Party in the lead, organised a campaign to demand that Prime Minister Howard deploy Australian troops to prevent attacks by the Indonesian military on Timorese people. According to the DSP, now the main constituent of the Socialist Alliance, Australian military intervention would be a massive victory. This campaign for troops in played a decisive role in lifting what the Australian Financial Review called the domestic taboo on discussion of military intervention in the region. This call to arms, it said, has for the first time in decades given broad legitimacy to the proposition that Australia should be able to intervene militarily outside its territory. As subsequent events have made clear, including further military intervention in April 2006, the actions of the Howard government in East Timor have had nothing to do with humanitarianism. They are motivated by the need to secure oil and gas resources. But the Socialist Alliance still supports the 1999 intervention. It refused to oppose the second deployment until September this year, when it shifted position, fearing that its radical pretensions were becoming all too clearly exposed. This unprincipled manoeuvring is not the result of mistakes. It is the product of an opportunist and nationalist outlook, which in the final analysis represents an accommodation to the deepest interests of the government and Australian imperialism as a whole.